Hello, and thank you for having me here today. I am so honored to be a part of the agenda. I want to use my time to inform and engage you on the cyber domain and what actions we must all take on behalf of the citizens of Iran. We can change their future and the world's future and see a free Iran soon. Warren Buffett says cyber warfare is the greatest threat to mankind, even more so than nuclear weapons. He's correct. We're under siege, deep in the middle of a new type of war in an increasingly interconnected world where nearly all adults have access to robust devices in their pockets, the next frontier of security isn't physical, it's digital. As daunting as the thought of nuclear wars, bombs and bullets are, the hacking of systems and the manipulation of our minds are equally alarming threats. The Iranian regime is at the forefront of actors in cyber warfare, and we must stop it. The current Iranian regime uses a mix of cyber intrusions, digital manipulation campaigns, and terrorist activities, or threat of such, as their key strategy for maintaining the regime's operational status quo and to improve their standing on the world stage and suppress their citizenry. Iran's regime also beh hides behind cyber operatives and fake personas. They can pretend to be our neighbors and fellow citizens. They are inside our digital infrastructure and inside our social media. And during this pandemic, COVID-19, social media is the replacement for the town square for socializing. Let's examine how they leverage the cyber domain to maintain control. In Iran, the crackdown on opposition and the media is enforced by the government. Their documented history includes arrests, executions, and filtering all news through state-run media, or even turning off internet access for its own citizens. They also suppress and digitally track the opposition and even the objective reporters. The Iranian regime uses a mix of these heavy-handed tactics along with subtler, more covert attacks or manipulation campaigns on social media to spread disinformation and fake news at a velocity and scale that would have been unheard of before the digital age. As I wrote about in my new book, Manipulated, Iran's goal is to drive positive news about its current regime, often manipulating its own people to ensure undying support for the mullahs, ideological and international political interests. The cyber operatives acting on behalf of the Iranian regime seek to blunt the media's ability to investigate their false dealings. They also wish to co-opt the media narrative into shoring up their reputations at home and abroad to support their interests. Iran has been using social media influence operations to discredit the pro-democracy movement, mainly the MEK, to their own citizens for years. Case in point, Iran promoted fake news relating to the Iran nuclear deal, trying to persuade the world that their nuclear program existed solely for peaceful use and that its military involvements in countries such as Yemen, Iraq, and Syria were humanitarian. Reuters exposed in 2018 more than 70 Iranian websites run out of Tehran that pretended to be local news organizations in other countries. The expose found the sites were written in over 16 languages, including English, Arabic, Spanish, and Persian to ensure readers that they would find their propaganda believable and hiding behind fake personas that look like news outlets, nonprofits, and grassroots organizations. Iran is known to block websites, social media networks, censor and track mobile connectivity, threaten and socially engineer reporters, meddle with access to internet-based encrypted messaging platforms, or restrict speeds or remove access to the internet altogether. 
As the internet becomes more ubiquitously available, the authoritarian regime of Iran scrambles to find ways to ensure they increase their influence over their citizens. That is why the Iranian people and protesters are becoming more creative and technical in using internet to get their voices heard globally. This is our call to action. We will never find a solution to a free Iran or safety from the regime's mix of citizen oppression, cyber intrusions, and terrorism without dedicating ourselves to a bold new approach. I offer a few steps. Step one, we need a comprehensive strategy across countries and the private sector to enable the citizens of Iran to achieve a free Iran. Step two, we need to ensure that the people of Iran can share in real time threats that could have an impact on their anti-regime protests and call for democracy. Step three, through financial backing, expert advice, traditional media bombardment, and yes, now social media influence campaigns, the United States and other countries could use an amplification campaign to bypass the Iranian regime to promote regime change by the Iranian people. We must quickly evaluate the effectiveness of diplomatic measures and set up a threat hunting team that aggressively searches for adversarial activity from the Iranian regime, especially those targeting the opposition. Step four, act. We can't allow excuses anymore. This is the crisis of our time. If a coalition of international policymakers, technology, and citizens act now, the overall future for the people of Iran and the world will take a more positive and different course. As George Washington wrote from Mount Vernon in 1799, offensive operations oftentimes is the surest, if not the only, in some cases, means of defense. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to share these ideas and a call to action with you.